Okay, so the question is, can that sense of meaning be hijacked? And the answer to that is absolutely, absolutely. Um, because you could say that the ultimate sense of meaning is composed of the union of fragmentary senses of meaning. And the fragmentary senses of meaning can be overwhelmingly powerful. Anger, sexual lust, and, and, and the sorts of things that you experience, when, say, when you're playing a video game, which are very carefully calibrated to keep you on the, on the edge of exploration, let's say. Now, I'm not a, a foe of video games, because games are complicated, and it isn't clear what people are doing when they're playing them. You know, they may be expanding their cognitive skills, they may be learning to cooperate, they may be learning to engage in complex problem solving. And so, but part of it's also a matter of balance, you know, 50 hours a week, probably not, unless you're going to go pro, right? Because there's other things you need to be attending to, it's not a stable solution for you, your family, your society. It's too one-sided. Yeah, and you can get pulled down rabbit holes of all sorts that, that are one-sided pursuits of meaning. So, and it's something we're actually going to talk about as the later classes unfold. The question is, how do you stop yourself from falling prey to a pathologized sense of meaning? And I think one of the answers to that is, don't lie. Because what you're hoping is that your nervous system is sufficiently healthy and well programmed so that what it reads out to you is reliable. And if you pathologize your psyche by either through sins of omission, let's say, or, or outright deception, you're going to warp that internal structure and it's not going to read out properly to you. And then your sense of meaning will lead you astray. So like one of the reasons for speaking the truth, I shouldn't say that because you don't know how to speak the truth, but you do know how not to lie. And it's a game you're playing with yourself, you can define the damn lies, no one else has to do that for you. You, you, you try not to utter falsehoods, because you warp your neurological structure by doing so, and then it will read out pathologically, and then if you rely on it to guide you, it will run you right off a cliff. So that's why there's a moral element to this, is if you're going to rely on your sense of meaning, make sure that you don't pollute the mechanism. See, this is, this is partly why people go to confession, right, which is, my, which is a, like I said, a psychotherapeutic technique. It's like, okay, what stupid, miserable, wretched things did I do this week? Well, that's a good thing to, to make conscious, right, because maybe you cannot do them the next week. And you think, well, why would you bother? It's like, well, you're in a ship. It's sailing across the, the, the stormy seas. If, if, you're, if you're hacking holes in it with a pickaxe, you should probably pay attention to that before you sink. So, it's a good idea to keep, to keep what you're doing that's stupid in mind, so that you can stop doing it. And so then you can more and more rely on yourself and your, and your own, you know, your own conscience, let's say, as a guide to proper action. You know in the Pinocchio story is that the conscience was not an unerring guide for Pinocchio. It had to learn. And so, and so, it's also partly pushing yourself into new situations and differentiating yourself so that you get wiser and, and so it's courage as well as truth those, those might be the two there's more, beauty, courage, truth, you know, the fundamental virtues yeah. why be virtuous? that's the question it's so that you can bear the suffering of life without becoming corrupt right? it's a practical practical, there's nothing more practical than that so, unless you want misery, and people do, you know it's exciting, misery so, other questions? alright then see you next Wednesday